Hey, what's up guys, it's Seb from Workbench, and this week we're gonna take a look at creating a simple text rig in Cinema 4D. So this week we're gonna take a look at creating a simple rig. In this case, we're gonna use it to reveal some text, but I want you to look at it and experiment with how simple it is to create something that can be used to animate other things. So let's jump into it and let me show you how we're doing this. I have a really simple setup here. As you can see, we have this W here and then we have this replace letter here. So what this W is, is just a simple slider I created to animate this text being revealed. And then I have this replace letter. What this does is it lets me, for example, have this P here and I can just click on that. Oh. <laughs> helps if I do the right thing I can just click on the P boom changes out the letter if I go back here it's still animated so let me show you how I'm doing this so I'm gonna start by turning off a few things just so that we can get started here so I started out by creating this W um, and as you can see my center point is dead center in the middle of the W so then I converted that W to splines. Now this whole technique is based on splines, but you can scale it or use different things for this. But I'm just gonna show you how to create this simple rig. So in our case, we're using this W and in order for me to be able to change it out, uh, I'm using an instancer. And see currently my instance reference is pointing at the P, but I can change it out pretty easily. Oops. <laughs> right back to the P. Yes, exactly what I was looking for. Okay. So let me explain how this is built. So I started out with user data and I have two types of user data here and I'll show you how I did that. So if you go in here and do add user data or you can manage user data if you already have some. And I'm basically doing a float slider here for the W and I named it W because the original text is red workbench. I have it set to percent, step one, and zero and a hundred. And then my second portion of this is this replace letter. And what this is, is link. So if you go and click add data, and instead of float slider, you have all these different types of things. And I'm currently using link. So there's a new link. So then I'm using all of that stuff inside of an espresso setup. So I'm going to create a new one and show you how that's created. So if you're in R21, you go into programming, DAGs, and Espresso. And it gave me a new Espresso. So I'm going to drag in this one here. And I'm going to reveal the two things, my user data down here. And inside my group, I have replace letter. And I also have my W. Now we're going to need a couple things. So obviously we need this instance. And since this is just a direct replace, we're just going to drag that directly here. And it goes under object property, reference objects. So I'm essentially passing through this link here out to here. And then the next one is that W. And that's that W slider. And how we're revealing that is I have a spline mask here. And I have a box that I'm animating up and down. I'm going to turn this off so you can actually see that stuff. So you can see that here. So how that's controlled is I dragged that in here. And this is my rectangle. And it started out as a rectangle anyway. I made that a cubic and I subdivided it. And then the reason it feels like that waviness is because I added a plane effector in here with a random field. And that's what gave it that wavy movement. So in order to map this zero to 100 to this, what we want to do is have it move from up here to down here. So the easiest way to do that is you're going to go in and create a range mapper. So you can just click here and type in range mapper. Here's our range mapper here. And now the range mapper is actually a super useful tool. Um, but think of it as a converter. It converts one, one thing of data to another. So we know we're feeding it percent. So our input range is going to be percentage. And we know our input is going to be 0 to 100. And this slider is what's going to be inputted in there. 
and then our output is going to be user defined because we're going to tell it where our upper and lower are. So the easiest way to do that is if you go into your basic tab here, oh, I'm sorry, if you go into your coordinate tab here, what I did was I went to freeze and I freeze the, all the position data so that we know zero is exactly where we want to start and 192 obviously is our end. So in our range mapper here, our lower is zero and then our upper is this negative 192. So I'll copy it, I'll paste it in here. So now we know zero output level is zero, 100 output level is negative 192. So if we drag that here, that's gonna go into coordinates, position, and position Y. So that's it. That rig is set up. So now if I click here, go to user data. You see I have it set to 100. If I go to zero, it moves back up. Now it's important to use position Y, not global position Y which would give you a completely different result because that's the global position of Y in the scene. Because I'm using the spline mask here, I'll just turn that guy back on. So you can see at zero, there's nothing visible. And at 100, the W is visible. And how that works is I have spline mask set B, subtract A, and it's along the Z axis. Now, these two splines, this spline and this spline, have to be in the same Z position. If they're not at the same Z position, this effect won't work. It'll try to interpolate between the two and it just gets wonky. You can see how you get like this weird wonkiness. And it may not look like a big deal, but as soon as you try to turn this guy on, you're gonna start to get some weird shifting in the text, you see that? which you definitely don't want. So you definitely want to make sure that they're on the same plane. And of course, that's only if you're using spline mask. But like I said, this is really scalable. So I'm just going to make a duplicate of this. I'm going to leave it a child of this. And then under user data, I'm going to go into manage user data. And you see, I made this a group. I can just control drag this. Now I have a second group and we can rename this second letter. So I'm just gonna call this two now and replace letters the same, separators the same. So if we hit okay, here's our thing here. So now we need to bring all this stuff together so that we can actually use it. I'm gonna rename this as well. We know that we're gonna use the same exact positioning data because it's just Y, so we're gonna keep that. Obviously this is the original rectangle, so we're not gonna use that. This is rectangle two. We're gonna grab that one there. And I'm just gonna connect that to coordinates, position, position Y. And then here under user data, you see we have my second letter group. So I'm going to grab two and I'm also going to grab replace letter. So two goes in here. And if you wanted to, you could color this a different color. Um, basically, it's in the basic tab here. We'll make them red for now, just so you can visually know what you're doing here. You don't have to. That's just personal preference. And then we want this instance here. So we're going to bring that instance in here and we're going to go that. And we know that that one goes to object reference object. So you can see it's not working currently. So now I forgot to name this. Okay. So if we go back up here, you can see we have our slider and our link. And if we take the link and I'm going to point it to the P here. So now we have the P and the slider here. Now we know we're at zero. So if we go to hundred, voila, there's our P. Now, one thing to note is that this group needs to move over here. So now you have a slider for both and you can easily control that. So the cool thing about this is now you have an animation that you just have a beginning key and an end key that you can move around rather than having to dig down and animate a bunch of stuff. Your animation is all right here. One gotcha. So I created this text with the straight text object. Now the problem with that is that when the text object comes in by default, if you only have one letter, the center point is down in the bottom left-hand corner. And the way this is set up, this is dead center. So when you add that here, it moves the text. So in order to fix that, what you have to do is go into your text here, make sure your alignment is set to center or middle. And then down here at the bottom where it says kerning, you're gonna to wanna to go down and you're gonna to wanna to change your baseline so that your baseline ends up being 
uh, I believe it's like negative 350, if I'm not mistaken, negative 352. So that now your baseline is in the correct place. So you can change this letter to whatever you want and it's always gonna be in the correct baseline now. That's just a little gotcha trick on this particular setup. So let me show you what the finished setup looks like. So we go in here to Espresso and see here we have all our ports, which are all our user datas, and they're all using that same convert percentage to radian and I, that's what i named it it's that simple range mapper that we saw before that is going from percent to user def defined and here's my user defined zero to one negative 192 and then if we go and take a look at our user data here's our user data now this is nice because you can very quickly go in here and set up an animation without having to dig down too deep into anything else let's see there's everything gone and from all of these, we can select them all. Control click, boom, and voila, they're all animated. So that quickly we can have an animation and I can change things out. So that's what that looks like. All right, well, that's it for this week. Definitely give this a try and see what are the types of things you can control with this kind of rig. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, leave in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, go to patreon.com forward slash workbench and check out the blog at workbench.tv. I'm Sev, and we'll catch you later.